Welcome back to Washed Up. I'm Kala. I'm Steven. What episode is this? This is episode, this is going to be number seven. Number seven. Uh -huh. We're back in the seat, the podcast seat. And the show just came out last week. Depending on what platform. So yeah, if you're on Bravo, this would air, it'd been this past <laughs> week. If you were on USA Network or obviously on Peacock, it came out a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we figured, why not do a little BTS? BTS. That sounds weird. That's behind what they the say, scenes. though, right? Yeah. Behind the scenes. I think we're going to just go ahead and recap every episode as its own mm -hmm. and just walk you through. Yeah. And what hear really like what's happens. actually happening. Now, I will preface this by saying this reality show is actual reality. There was nothing staged or set up the entire time while filming. It's just the cameras and due to time constraints on the episodes, there's only so much that can actually make the episode. So we filmed yeah. for four months straight of like nonstop filming. Yeah, four months straight to get 10 hours of episode. Like finish. watching it back, you're like, wait, that, is, that isn't showing, that isn't showing, that isn't showing. Yep. But it's just because there are only an hour. <laughs> I time would limits. honestly hate to be production to try to like pick and choose which clips to use, which clips not to use. Like their job, respect to them. It would be like, so tough. It's so tough. I can't imagine. There'd just be so much to digest. And yeah. I know going into filming a week before we started filming, we had some meetings with production. And they're like, okay, you know, if there's not a whole lot happening on the farm, we may have to, you know, figure out some storylines. Yeah. And then a week after, they're like, all right, we've got plenty yeah, to work like, with stop. already. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> when there's enough drama for now. Can y'all yeah. tone it down a bit? Like, how can you pick and choose? I don't know. But so, anyway, episode one. It episode off, one. It started off strong. It did. So it started off with us burning some CRP grasses. Yep, I think I flied from Dallas that day. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, y'all were burning some grasses. Well, Please give us a backstory because I didn't know about this until obviously I met Steven and I thought it was so crazy to actually set fire to a field because like the first thing that came to my mind was wouldn't it spread? Well, and you can't begin to understand how fast and how big of fires these grass fires are but this is normal for, like how often do you do we this? do this every year so like spring like what time of year? so it's always in february march or april and it's actually required for us being on the farm um it's in a government program called crp which is conservation reserve program mm -hmm. and every single year we have to burn them off to allow the gross the grasses to grow back thicker or if we're actually farming the field we have to get the grasses out of there so we can actually plant it. See, I had no idea. I thought you were just making that up to try to find like sheds. Well, we do it. Yeah, we do it to find but sheds too. But <laughs> it is like required for y'all yeah. to do that. And it's actually way better for the, the grasses. See, I would have mm -hmm. never guessed that. I feel like a lot of people are probably like, oh, why are they burning the earth? But it's like that it's required Whenever and you, it's good for it. When you burn up that dead thatch, it converts the nutrients in the thatch to where the next year's growth can use it. So Fun fact. Fun <laughs> fact. Spread shit. Spread it. Wait, what did I wait, say? Wait. <laughs> You're spread trying to shit. insult me and you messed I up. Spread shit. <laughs> <laughs> spread shit. I grew Ooh. up doing these fires, so even though I do spread sheets now, I, I can still remember <laughs> how to burn up a field and do a pretty damn good job of it. So good, in fact, that I almost burned up the whole county. Yeah. And last year, when we were filming this, two weeks before we filmed this scene, I'd burnt up Jesse's Ranger. I know. I remember you sending me videos of that. I mm -hmm. thought it was a joke. It was no, not a joke. No, I literally burn up his ranger. They, Jesse still brings it up to this day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's not happy about it. But Did you buy him a new one? No, I told him I was going to whenever I made a little better money. <laughs> that has not come to fruition yet. Just like keep pushing I'm going to kick that back. can down the road. I'll be like, Jesse, I swear to yeah. you, when I make better money, I got you, man. <laughs> R.I.P. that ranger. That shit is pricey too it is oh a new ranger is more than like a a car, a car. Yeah. it's like 35 grand stupid did it's so dumb lesson? yes Obviously. i did well actually two weeks later Obviously i'm not, yeah. yeah we almost had a fire get out of hand on camera so they had set it up production we told them that we do these fires every single year and they're like can we film that like that sounds amazing i'm like no it's actually a shit show and they're like perfect <laughs> so they wanted to film it and they set it up for 2 p.m on this specific day and Jesse, Cole, and I, you know, I was busy with Cala. Jesse and Cole were out in the fields. We were getting ready to be, well, we were full on in planting season. So it was not the best time to do this burn. And looking at the winds, it was flirting with going too windy to even burn that day. But they were consistent winds, so we felt pretty confident about it. How windy is too windy? I'm just curious. It's like over 12 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah, because then it could jump roads and jump ditches. Yeah, that's scary. It's very scary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, I don't like these fires. Um, 
not at all. Yeah. They're actually dangerous. But yeah. so whenever we went over there, the winds were consistent. So we got our back burn, which is basically like you burn the downwind side first. So that way the fire can't escape your little ring. So like if the wind's blowing towards Cala, we would burn everything on this end of the field. So that way, whenever we set the majority of the field on fire, it hits the already burnt area because it can't go through the already it burnt area. Burning. Yes, it stops burning. Yeah. So that was the design and setup and everything was going smoothly. Like all the camera guys were around, drones were flying over. You know, we had a tractor go around the outer ring with a disc because whenever you disc the flip, you flip the dirt over, it doesn't light on fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically sure. we, we went through all the preventative measures. We lit the fire, like everything's going good. And then all of a sudden the wind that was going this way goes Just switched up and literally did a 180 degree turn. Thing. And I was trying to play it cool because this is like very early on in filming. And so I was trying to play it cool, like, yeah, everything's fine. It's all good. And then the fire got to where Cole did the, or Jesse did the uh, disking area. It's like yeah. a 10 or 12 foot wide disc. Well, the wind was started picking up and it blew over the disc area. And on the other no. side of the disc area was Did like... It started again? Oh, yeah. And on the other side of the disc area, you can't see it. They don't show this on camera. I was freaking out because they had all their vans parked in the next field over. Oh, my god! The next field over was six-foot tall grasses. And that side of the farm has another 600 acres of grasses. Yeah, that would have been a freaking disaster. Like... It was truly, I, we had one opportunity right when you see me blown with the wind blower and I'm like underneath a tree, that's a fence line that kind of breaks up the tall grasses. If it got through that fence line, all productions, vans, everything was done. Like it was bad news. So us freaking out on camera, that was like legit. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. We're about to burn up all these production vans. Like, and once it got into that field, there's no stopping it. We'd have had to call the fire department, but they wouldn't have well, stopped it. Yeah, and, like, mind you, I have to say, like, the fire department, how long would they take to get out there? Hour and a half. Yeah. It's yeah, it's like a volunteer. A farmer. It's not like a I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm so sick, by the way. I'm OD'd on a day pool right now. So mm -hmm. if I stumble on my words, that's why. It's okay. Um, no, the fire department would take forever. Yeah, it's volunteer fire department. Yeah, it's so not it's like, like you're in the city just calling and they're down the street and they come right away. No, these guys are working their own jobs yeah. and then they get a call. They have to drive to the fire station, change, load up, and then head out. So it's an hour and a half. So that's why it is such a huge deal if the wind starts blowing the wrong way or if yeah. it's out of control because it's like you cannot stop it. Yeah, ah! and it, it was bad. It was bad. It thankfully, bad. Watching it back, it looks bad. Thankfully, you see me with the backpack blower on. I'm underneath the tree right on the fence line that separates the two grass fields. Mm -hmm. And like you see me blow it out. And then I'm on my knees and I look to my right and I'm like, <sighs> and that was like 100% <laughs> legit. Like that was me saying, Thank okay, that could God. have been really, really, really bad. Now we can kind of enjoy filming again. I've completely forgot that we were on camera. Like everything that was going on, I was like, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so that was fun. That under control. Yeah. I, I, I love the backstory of it because me, myself, too, like, I did not know what all it entails, like, how the wind could just switch up last minute. Yeah. That it's bad. scary. It's scary. And you've seen the little uh, tornadoes in the middle yeah. of the fire? That's because the wind started doing this. No. It was bad. I don't want any part of it. <laughs> yeah, that was, that'll probably be a season one only deal. I don't want to do any more fires. Right. <laughs> I know. I guess so. In the episode as well. So I land. I'm coming from Dallas, mm -hmm. and we are just kind of starting to date again. We're trying to work through things. You know, we were going through some issues. I obviously I was at fault on a lot of them, and completely own up to that. And we were on a break for I don't know. Like we were still talking, but we were technically were on a break. We were still. Okay. I'll let you explain. Yeah. We were still talking and seeing each other regularly. Yes. We can't deny it. We were seeing yes. each other every week and we didn't live together yet. Correct. But we were not like exclusive together. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. But the show starts like as we are. Simultaneous. Talking. Yes. And that was like, that's not any. That wasn't planned. It wasn't planned at all. I was a little hesitant about all of this being showcased because of that fact mm -hmm. too. Like we had so many things to talk through and actually the show did not showcase like every conversation and like all the struggles we were actually. We had a through. ton of talks on camera we too. We had so many conversations on camera about our relationship. So I'm kind of thankful that, you know, not all yeah. of it made it because a lot of it should stay private between us. Yeah. 
So that's good. But what you're seeing is real, like us actually trying to work through our issues and trying to figure out if we can be together, if or if we should call it. Mm-hmm. So none of that was altered. or. No, that's or not fake in any way whatsoever. Up. And it, I mean, shows everything. So that was, let's see, you were at the house whenever we were burning that fire. Yep. Yeah, because I'd left. Yeah. A little bit late to get over there. <laughs> yeah, I love how they just threw that in there. Yeah, they had to throw that in there. <laughs> so, like, I had been up to Gallatin a couple of times. So, you know, I did get some heat for saying, there's nothing to do here. Like, the wife, I you know, I did say those things. I'm not going to deny it. But the interviews, some of them were also, like, cut and pasted. Mm-hmm. I was copy pasted. Like, they were cut certain times like it, it wasn't like a there was more context of words yes exactly. yeah there's, there's more, more context, context to my it sentence, but mm-hmm. they because do, you do love gallatin yeah i do uh, yeah i mean i've lived here for how long and i always go up to the farm with you and mm-hmm. i love it um the internet does go out frequently though that is a fact yeah because we're not i'm not on starlink i have we need to get starlink i know so badly. i have via sat side so, no don't ever get via sat yeah the satellite internet it's horrible do not but we always <laughs> have so much fun up there we do we love it. I mean, it, especially, well, and that would have been. That's like our little escape. That would have been April, so the weather was getting decent, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Because you really like it whenever the weather's when halfway be decent. Outside. Like, that's what the farm is all about, is, like, mm-hmm. being outdoors and, like, exploring and going and doing, like, four-wheeling, mm-hmm. biking, boating. So right biking. now, we're filming this episode in March, and the mm-hmm. weather's still pretty rough. So it's not like you love being at the farm right now because there's truly nothing to do. Yeah, I mean, it's March right now, and it's freezing here. Mm-hmm. We were up this past weekend, and we stayed inside the whole time. Mm-hmm. Well, but I went shed hunting. You stayed inside. I stayed inside because I'm sick. I'm getting over <laughs> sick. But I just wanted to touch on that. Like, I do love Gallatin. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, I'm from Dallas, so of course it's going to be a huge difference. There's no denying that. It's a little bit of a difference. It's completely opposite different. Even if you live in Kansas City versus going up to the farm, it's completely different, but... It is. It's a nice little escape. You love it. Change of pace, yeah. And then we also get into, I know, looking at the list, because trying to remember what happens in episode one, we also (laughs) set the stage for my dad and Galena. Oh, my gosh. Should we touch on this? I'll let you take it away. Should I? Yeah, Yeah, I will. I'm like, sure. Oh, and also, this is not in episode one, but I was a little shocked, to say the least, Get it off your to chest. To hear about some of the things that were said about me by somebody in the family. Just name name <laughs> drop. Steve. Mm-hmm. I was, <laughs> I mean, I think everybody knows who I'm alluding to, and mm-hmm. I'm not scared to say it. Like, no, absolutely um, not. So, I mean, I was a little shocked just because we've always been very cool in person and cordial and friendly, and I would have literally never guessed that there was any animosity, anything going on. Like, I knew that that we've always, you know... There's been a little bit of tension. But there's been, I would say there's been a little tension and maybe we don't see eye to eye, but these have never been conversations that him and I have had, like, in person. And so for him to say all of that on camera and then I had never heard any of that from him, it just felt very weird watching it back on TV for the first time and not having, like, him tell me what was going on. You know what I mean? Like, if somebody has a problem with you, wouldn't you want them to say it to you, not on TV for America to see before you see. So I want to hear. So like I, I literally watched the same time that everybody else watched that. Yeah, that was rough. It was a little. Uh, that was rough. It was rough and, the, and un, not true. Not having a, a job the, in five years. A lot, a lot <laughs> of what he said was just like so fabricated. I screamed whenever he said that. I was like, what? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Five years? I don't think he screamed like that. Oh, I did. You weren't. Oh, but he was a little bit more angry. No. Really? I mean, I I would say I was more like shocked, like what is happening than angry. And then yeah. I was angry, of course, too, because like And I was in New York. I so I wasn't even able to watch the episodes with you. Yeah. So I, that was really rough on you. And I I feel really bad that well, number one, I wasn't even here whenever that dropped. And obviously the things that were said were horrible to hear. Like awful. Yeah. They were. Especially horrible to hear at the same time that everybody else is hearing them. Mm-hmm. Just to, like, go through life and, like, think about all of... Because we're together so often. So it's like, okay, so this guy that I'm... We're with every single week thinks that poorly of me or is talking that poorly of me. And I had no idea. 
That is alarming. I think this calls for a conversation between y'all two on camera. And to be honest, we haven't even... You guys haven't said one word. We haven't talked about this at all. He hasn't reached out to me. I haven't reached out to him. I'm like... Yeah, you guys haven't said one word to each other about it. So anyway, that's the dynamic there. And I had to throw that in here. That didn't happen in the first episode, but it is a huge... So yeah, when we're saying this show is real and the drama is real, like this is not fake. I mean, yeah. we're, you know, you're still dealing with like how to take that. Yeah. Therapy has been my best friend. <laughs> we love therapy. <laughs> time for you to talk about dad and Galena. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So at the time she was staying over there every night. Like mm-hmm. they were, they were together. I would say everybody in the friend group, all the family would say that they were together. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah, at together. Time, yeah, for sure. This was a year ago, mind yeah, you. Yeah, for sure, together. Um, at the time, yeah. My dad would still deny it. He would still deny it. Yeah. But, like, they were practically living together. Yeah. Yeah, it was no secret. Right. And, like, and it, they go out to dinner all the time in Kansas City with friends. Like, it was right. everyone that's like around them knew or, like, was like, okay, they're together. Yeah, and, I mean, he was definitely still doing his thing. He was not as open about it, though. He Mm -hmm. wasn't, like, straight up telling Galena that to begin with. I think it eventually did get to that point, which is what you see in the show when he was straight up to her face. But prior to that, I don't think he was very straight up about it. Yeah, I would say there's definitely some things that he's saying to her that he's not telling us. Yeah. So that's kind of a little bit of why you're seeing her act the way she's acting, too. Not act, but just, like, how she's perceiving things and why she's getting angry and why she's reacting this way Mm -hmm. because there were real feelings involved. Still are. Still are. Yes. Yeah. So with all of that mess, (laughs) Uh, all of that mess, messy, I can't keep up with it. It's so bad. And trying to balance that with what our real life stresses come from the business side of things Mm -hmm. it has been a nightmare. It keeps me up at night. And whenever I say that, I, I truly mean it. Like it's stressful. Yeah. And you've heard conversations because here's the deal. When we started these car washes back in 2019, mm-hmm. we leveraged almost all the equity we had in the farm ground to build out these car washes. Not okay, not all of it, but a lot of it. Mm-hmm. So whenever we say we bet the farm on these car washes, we truly bet the farm on these car washes. And this hedge fund, we're really cash dry. I mean, cash flow is tough right now. Yes, balance sheet wise, we look good, but cash flow is a struggle mm-hmm. each and every week for us. And so we're trying to get our capital back by selling the real estate of these car washes to a hedge fund. So basically they would invest in us $105 million for the, it was, I don't can't remember, it was like uh, five or six locations. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that would give us our capital back to have more operating funds, give us obviously a way bigger cushion in margin. And the car washes are doing well, but still, that is so much money. One of these build outs now for a car wash is running like $7 million. Yeah, it's it's stupid. These things are so expensive to build out. And we built out eight of them at the same time. That's and we're, of- we're not sitting on, like everyone's from the outside thinks we're just so cash flush yeah. and rich. Like, do y'all know how much money it takes to, that goes into this? And it we don't absolutely have. Absolutely insane. No, nobody, even if they were super wealthy, would put in their own money to do all No, this. they would have it like. 30 different investors yes. pulling their money together. Yes. We did this all with equity that we had got from the farm ground. And so basically we're starting up all these car washes, all these businesses. We're cash flow dry. Like it is a struggle. And this hedge fund, we're like, hey, we got to sell the real estate of these car washes. We're still going to own the operating entity, but we've got to recover some capital so we can make it through. Things are a struggle. And that was really everything that was taking place while this show was filming. And that was all real. Very stressful. So Galena played a huge role in that, obviously. She is the CFO. Over uh, all the businesses. All the businesses, yeah. And she works like no other. Like, as far as, like, my thoughts on Galena, she is an incredible person, stubborn as a mule. I cannot get her to change her mindset on my dad. And you'll see how that plays out yeah. over the course of this season. This is the first episode, so I don't want to touch on it too much. Yeah. But it is so tempting to, like, it's so tempting. I know it's so tempting. But I love there's so much that happens, but y'all will just have to watch. Galena's awesome. She is a workhorse like no other. Like she probably really the most important person in our too. company. She does. She has, she has such a, a good such heart. Such a good heart. She's a she's a good person. Mm-hmm. So setting the stage for that, and you'll see all of this kind of be talked about in episode one, or you did hear this be talked about, and that's real. And I'll I let just, you say um the situation with my dad and Galena and my mom. Oh, I'm 
you, what do you want me to say? I'm passing that off. You can say do what the truth is. Truthful? Yeah, you can say what the truth like, is. Like, for real truthful? Well, yeah, because my dad said the timeline on, on <sighs> TV. Okay, well, I guess I'll be the bearer of bad news since Steve already hates me. <laughs> 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 um. So whenever they met, Steve and Galena, Steve was still married to Christy, which is Steven's mother. Christy is an amazing mom. The best mom. The best mom. Yeah. Like, she's awesome. She's so good to us girl like girlfriends as well. Like she is mm-hmm. the sweetest, most kind hearted, most generous person yeah. ever. She like is. truly. Yeah. Um, and just genuine in general. But And she's a kick ass businesswoman. And a kick ass businesswoman. Just she, saying. <laughs> she might rake in more than Steve, to be honest with you. Actually she does by far. <laughs> Christy is <laughs> she's kicking Christy's ass, taking names. <laughs> They, Galena met Steve while he was still married to Christy and mm-hmm. they started a relationship while he was still married. And so it began on a, on a bad foot. Yeah. And it's, they had a, a rocky, uh, marriage. My mom and my dad are just two completely polar opposite people. My mom's an introvert, like very just loves family, just wants to be with family 24 seven. And my dad is the biggest extrovert, like biggest people person wants to be out and about talking to social, random people social very social yeah and so they were polar opposites before any infidelity happened like that was a bad marriage from the beginning because of the distinct Dynamic. personality differences Just very extreme yeah, yeah. differences you have like polar opposites you have a extreme introvert and a extreme extrovert Yeah, that is very true. Mm -hmm. Like, meeting them, obviously, after they had already separated three years ago whenever I met them. Can you imagine them together? I could never imagine them together. I couldn't. No. They're they're way different. I don't know. (laughs) They're way different. Oh, yeah. I can picture it. In, in also so, in saying that, yeah. I also want to make sure that I have a very good relationship with my dad, respect the hell out of him, uh, work ethic wise and things like that. Yeah. I, I do. Obviously his comments were completely out of line. I'll admit that all day long. Thank you. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. They were. So <coughs> what else happens in this episode? Oh, we had our truck and trailer setup get stolen. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't really even know a lot about that. Were you there whenever that happened or were you in I, Dallas? I don't know where I was. I feel like you told me about it. I don't think I was there in person. So I can't believe y'all got him on video though. Oh yeah. We had security like, cameras out front. Don't, don't people know though? That you have security cameras? You'd have thought so. Um, but yeah, they pulled in. It was, uh, so here's the deal. I wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. I'm at the office by 4.15. They had stolen that at like, I can't remember if it says on the security was tape on, on the weekend? episode. Um, yes, it was a Saturday night. And I still show up to the office at yeah. 4.15 on yeah. Sunday. And I think they were there at 3.45. So I was 30 minutes off from being there whenever they were on the lot at our office. But we had security cameras out front. And there's, you see there's a lead car. That lead car had a distinct, can't remember what's it called. It's like a plastic piece on the back windshield that makes it look cool. <laughs> Slots. Ah, I don't know what it's called. But you know what I'm an saying? accessory to the car. Yeah, it's that an accessory to the car. Out. Yes. And Jesse Stretch, who is our COO of the farms, like he's seen that and he's like, I know that car. Like I, it's, that's a one of a kind car. I know exactly where it came from. They're parked at this house, which is a local house nearby. What? That's the car they drove up. I, but what a dummy. Yeah. How are you not thinking this through? When you're stealing, how much worth of equipment do they steal? So it was a truck and trailer setup with two Kubota mowers on it, 70-inch decks. They were diesel mowers with two backpack blowers, like three or four weed eaters, an Wait, edger. I don't know what Okay, that so it was, like a, it was like a hundred to a hundred and ten thousand dollars setup. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, whenever you say mower, I think of like $2,000. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it was a hundred to $110,000 setup. And the problem is like m- a lot of people have said, why didn't you just turn it into insurance? Well, with our company being the size of it is, that's it, that it is. And us, we've had a lot of accidents over the years. I mean, like- You the, don't want to turn something like that into No, insurance. because we don't want our premium to shoot through the right. roof. So we just had to eat a hundred to $110,000 just gone. But we had the security camera. So we- saw this car. And so we go over to the house where this car is usually parked. Right. And my dad walks up to the guy, knocks on his door and says, Hey, can I check your barn for our setup? Like I have video footage. Yes. Of you. Yes. And the guy was super open and honest because his first answer was go look in my barn, like go look wherever you want to on my property, which for us, we were like, okay, if he was that trying, it's not here. Correct. We felt like that guy with the way he was being open and honest, no big deal. Like he didn't have it. 
Oh, well, I would think that he was hiding it. So, no, the way he was acting and basically allowing us to look wherever, <laughs> he did not have it. And they ended up, and this is, we reacted emotionally. We reacted too soon before evaluating the facts. There's another car that happens to have oh, that exact wait, same really? thing. Wait, mm-hmm. really? Did it, I skip, did that show that or no? No, it didn't show that. Oh, okay. So that say, the house that, that we went to had nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. In that, I know. Well, thankfully, they didn't show anything like where we I'm were. I'm like, he's hiding it somewhere else. Yeah, no. He, they were innocent. Like that was we acted emotionally. Thankfully, my dad literally just said, "Hey, you know, That's here's." Good. Yeah, it wasn't like he went over he there and like. Accuse them. No, no. He's like, "Can we look through your barn?" And the guy was like, "Yeah, go right ahead." And so we're like, "Okay." Like if if he if he had it in the barn, he'd been like, "Oh no, what are you talking about?" Damn, you kind of feel like a piece of shit after that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, oh fuck it. He really doesn't have it. No, it was bad, and so we reacted too emotionally on that deal. But that's a lot of money to spend. It is. Though. It's hundred hundred ten thousand yeah. dollars, and it's like like how did they know that the truck you know was sitting there? Yeah. How did they know the mower was hooked up? Wait, so were the keys in the truck? No, they weren't. They broke the door open and then jump started it. No way. Uh-huh. Wow. Yep. That Actually, they used think. a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck it in there and uh, turned it on. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. That is wild. So wait, how did you find out who it actually was? Um, I can't go into too much detail okay. because they're right in the judicial system, whatever it's called, going through the process. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they did get caught. Get this. So we're at the end of filming. Oh, gosh. We wrapped filming in mid to late July. Mm-hmm. A week after they stopped filming, we get a call. Everything's been found. Where? So the truck was in a field just northeast of Hamilton, Missouri, parked in the like in a big ditch. They drove it into the crop field, and then they drove it along the edge of the woods, and they parked it inside the woods. So it had just been placed there? No, it had been placed there the day, the basically the day they took it. They drove oh, it right down there. they just had found it. Mm-hmm. So Hamilton is what, 20 minutes away? 20 minutes from away. From Gallatin? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yep. So they literally took it and just... They parked it because they didn't want the truck to be seen. And then they put the trailer on another truck. <gasps> and then they took the trailer elsewhere. So it's crazy. Wow. It all comes back. It's a big investigation, and and they're nailing the guy, um, the person, the the thief. The thief. I'm glad that they found him. That is so wrong. To it's crazy. Do. It's crazy. So, so get this: the truck was right there. The trailer was in another part of the U.S. Found the trailer, <laughs> still in Missouri. What? Well, okay, I, I'm acting like it was across the country. Yeah, it was still in. Part of the US. It was still in Missouri, but it was about as far away from us in Missouri like as you can get. Hours away. Four hours away. Three and a half, four hours. Wow. So that, yeah. So the trailer was down there by itself, found that. And then every single mower, the two mowers, the backpack blowers, all the weed eaters, the edgers, all in the same barn. <gasps> mm-hmm. Where the trailer was? No, different or spot. Can I can I ask where the guy is located or no? Um, okay, no. Close to where we do a bunch of stuff. Okay. So truck up by the farm, trailer way, way, way out in the middle of nowhere, that Missouri. And then all the stuff back in a city area. Wow. Isn't that wild? Wow. So we recovered every bit of it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So how did you leave? I mean, sorry, I just have so many questions. It's this a- is my first time hearing of this. I'm glad that y'all were able to like get it figured out. That took a few months though. Yeah, it took a few months. There, It's a big operation. Um, Was everything still in working condition? The truck needed a little bit of work because it had sat out there with the windows down right. for like two and a half months. Raccoons oh, chewed up the seats. Lovely. Yeah, it was great. Awesome. Um, but yeah, everything worked properly. Everything was fine. So isn't that nuts? That is nuts. I know. I know. Wow. Yeah, they fed, it was a giant investigation. They were investigating something else that like completely unrelated. It was a big, like big theft. So oh, like, my This guy's gosh. like a professional thief. So we're so happy he got caught then. Yeah. Because this is not the first thing he no. stole. No, 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 no. They found the it. Thing? They found it from another investigation and they walked in because they were doing a wow. issue. They were doing a search warrant and then found our stuff. And then it traced back, the serial numbers traced back to our Can name. Can you imagine how many things that they had stolen prior to that? It's crazy. Like, so, yeah. Ugh. And that's still ongoing. But it's pretty wild. It's So that's we got wild. it all back. And that was a week after filming stopped. So we didn't get to piece together the story in the actual season. But that's what happened, which is pretty neat. That is neat. Uh-huh. Neato, gang. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So is that? I feel like we touched on pretty much everything. Is that everything in episode go? one? I think so. I think that's all. Unless you have anything else you want to touch on? Not that I can think of. So we're going to continue doing this weekly. We have so much to unpack as the season goes on. I know mm-hmm. all of the episodes already dropped on Peacock, but right now they're being released weekly on USA. USA Network. Bravo. 
Bravo. It's being released tomorrow. What's the date tomorrow? The 25th of March? Yeah. Okay, so 9 p.m. Central Time on Bravo every, every week, Monday. Every Monday. And then E, but we don't know when. Yep. So those dates will be announced. I bet soon. by the time this podcast is out, we'll know. So if you check our social medias, we'll definitely post about it. Yep. So we're just going to recap every episode, mm -hmm. tell you behind the scenes. Oh, tell you I know one more thing I wanted to say. Oh. I wanted to clear my name because oh, after the okay. big fire ordeal, we go into my dad's office and it's just me getting railed. Or at least that's <laughs> like how the episode showcases it. I just want to point out the fact that the fire was a joint decision between Jesse Cole, Jake, and I. It was not me that set it up. Sure. So, like, it's like they only showed me getting yelled at. Like, oh, yeah, Cole's yelling at Steven saying it's Steven's fault. It was a joint decision between us all. Don't try and make me out to be the guilty sure. party. <laughs> well, they let you have it. That's for sure. Oh, made me look like an idiot. And then my dad's just coming down on me because they just all threw me under the bus. I actually do believe you, though, because you are so adamant about, like, Let's check the wind. Let's check the... Mm. Uh, because if you'd watch one of these fires go the opposite direction, it is so scary. I know. That's why I believe you whenever you say that because of how anal you are in other areas of your life. I know mm -hmm. that you were like... I was. That wind we, switched. We believe you. We believe you, Steven. You didn't do it. It okay. wasn't your fault. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right well, well, come thanks. back every week. We're going to start up yeah. in these weekly. Weekly episode mm -hmm. recaps. We'll tell you what really happened behind the scenes. Also, we definitely need to set up a conversation between you and my dad. I am scared. But it has to be on camera. That's I'm my one. It has to be filmed. That, but. I, it has to be done. Because y'all have not said a word to each other since the episodes dropped. Like, y'all have been around each other, and I don't think there's been one communication between. Yeah. we Well, we were only around each other one time, and that was yesterday for the first time. And I didn't say anything to him. I'm not going to. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I guess we could. Do you see how hesitant I am right now? I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to talk to him. But it probably needs to happen. It needs to happen. So we'll see. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks yep. for tuning in. See you guys for episode two yep. recap. Yep. Bye. Bye.